my internship with Emanuel Medical Center. The process was very taxing. So I honestly was not prepared mentally for the things that I would have to do. So this started in May. We asked them about me going there in May. Never got a reply. So I was like, okay, they'll message me eventually. This is when COVID first started taking off. So I was like, they're busy. Then I was like, no, they forgot about you, sis. So then I messaged them um, in June, and they were like, okay, yeah, you, all right, cool. So we moved forward. It's August. Never got a reply back about anything that I had to do for the internship. I honestly just thought that they had accepted me and that was it. No, it was paperwork. So a week before uh, the internship actually starts, I now have to fill out all the documentation do the HIPAA stuff, and then I have to go and get my TV shot, which honestly was not terrible. I, I don't like shots. But it honestly wasn't bad. It was just super, super annoying to rush in that last week. But, you know, it worked out, obviously, because I'm here telling you about my internship. But COVID really interfered with the entire thing. I wasn't allowed in any of the wards. I spent a lot of my time at a desk. And that, I can, I can honestly tell you that I'm an expert at charting. I watched them chart for four hours straight for three out of the five weeks that I was there. I, in my sleep, I could do it. And this is my schedule. As you can see, I was on med surge. I went to senior behavioral health. I went to the ER and the ICU. The ICU is nothing but COVID patients. And I literally just watched these people do, honestly, I couldn't even watch them do their jobs because a lot of them were in those curtained rooms and it was very, very difficult to observe them. So I was just like, okay, so I'm here for two days, I guess. But they were all very nice. They tried to talk to me, ask me about my aspirations and all of that. Med surge was not as bad. Um, this is where I watched most of the charting happen. I got to visit two patients the in the entire time that I was in med surge, and they were and it was pretty interesting. Honestly, I got to watch a man get a blood transfusion. That was kind of dope. Um, he was very disoriented. He kept trying to leave. It was not time for him to be like discharged. It was, it was actually kind of comical. I wish you could have been there. Um, the ER, that was okay. Um, I got to follow one of the nurses around for the first day that I was there. And then the second day I got to follow the doctor. SPH, I got the most freedom, mostly because the entire ward is closed off, so everyone has to be tested for COVID. So it wasn't really a concern of me getting in contact with any patients who had it or anything. So it was the actual, it was, it was considerably better than most of the other wards. I didn't get to meet with Juanita Porter. They sent me to med surge again because uh, she was tangled up. And Martha Anders, she showed me the administration side of everything that was going on. And she has a lot of responsibilities. A lot. <laughs> so I can honestly tell you that, of course, as I just said, the only interesting parts were the senior behavioral health and occasionally the ER. Uh, I got to give a psychosocial and, well not give, I got to sit in on a psychosocial and SVH and I got to talk to Miss, uh, Miss Buckham, the social worker. And it was really cool because it turns out that she knows uh, someone that I know. Her name is Ophelia and she works at Conservative Services in Reedsville. And Ophelia, Ophelia actually helped her get into social work. She, uh, you know, she gave her the, the resources to get grants and actually go and get her master so she could be a social worker. And then, of course, being the wonderful person she is, Miss Beckham put me on. And thankfully, uh, I now have a new direction to go in because I was very concerned about what I was going to do after I get my bachelor's. 
because initially I wanted to go to med school because I wanted to be a psychiatrist, but then after doing all of this, I was like, do I really think I have the heart to go to medical school? And she was like, well, you don't have to jump directly into it. You can go and get your master's, you can work for a little bit, get your money up, so you can afford it if you don't happen to be able to get any grants. And I thought that, that was really, really awesome. My time at SVH, I can honestly say I left there being extremely excited about going back. And I honestly, I'm very upset with myself that I didn't push um, to have more time in SVH rather than going to other boards because I knew that I wasn't going to enjoy anything as much as I enjoyed this. I have always had a very focused mindset when it came to what I wanted to do career-wise and it's always been with mental health and like and obviously I'm in the ward that does that. Why would I want to be anywhere else? But I didn't push so then I ended up going to the ICU which was terrible. Um, but the ER, the ER was fun. I got to meet a couple of patients. There were several of them who were very not okay. Uh, not COVID or anything. Like one female ended up having, a, I guess, an allergic reaction to the medication they gave her and she started growing up. And so like, and she was like calling for a nurse but everybody was busy. And uh, I just so happened to be like passing by and I saw her, so I went and got some of for her and we got her cleaned up. And it was cool that they let me help out with that. Um, there was another woman who came in with some issues with her heart rate. It was extremely high and she had had uh, issues with blood pressure in the past. And so um, I just kind of got to sit with her while they tried to give her an IV, which was not working for some reason. They took three of them, two times each, and at some point she was just like, can you just get me some water or something, maybe I'm dehydrated. They, like, they were blowing things left and right. They tried two times in her hand, twice in both of her, uh, in both of her arms, and it just was not working. And, uh, but I got to talk to her, and um, it, was, it was really nice. Being in the ER really made me realize that I don't want to be a general doctor because I don't feel like they get to spend enough time with their patients. Um, I genuinely enjoy the patient side of medicine as much as I enjoy the actual practicing of it. I enjoy being able to sit down and like talk to people and that's something that the doctors just don't do. And it's also something that nurses have issues doing because they're so busy with their caseloads as I saw. Like some, some of the nurses on some of the floors had multiple like six, seven patients and then some of them had COVID patients on top of that, which just made things even more difficult. And it really just kind of cemented for me that I only want to do psychiatry. I honestly did not enjoy most of my time during my internship. I thought it was not that great. And I know it has a lot to do with COVID and if COVID hadn't happened, I would have been able to do more. But even so, I think that it would have just multiplied how much I enjoyed SBH and it would have just been the exact same outcome. I wouldn't have enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed being an SBH that one week. And I can honestly say that I am glad that I did it because it really, really cemented that this is what you want to do. Move forward with it. You have opportunities. There are alternative pathways. You don't have to be traditional in the way that you do things. And there are people that can help you. And I thought that that was really awesome. And I hope that I get to do another internship, but this time something more focused in mental health, maybe in like Pineland, or if SBH will take me maybe doing something with them for a longer amount of time. But that was it.